Hello, hello, how are you? Welcome to a new video. Well, today we are going to be doing some small structured cabling activities. Generally, this activity that we are going to do today can also be used in the company, we can also do it at home. In my case, I'm using it here at home because I had to move my Wi-Fi router to a slightly more distant area. I had to connect it with UTP cable, and actually, in the part where I was going to connect the router, I couldn't fit two UTP cables, so I opted to use this adapter that on the internet is known as an Ethernet splitter. It has two jack inputs, you can see here that it has two jack inputs and one RJ45 output, that is, one male and two females. This adapter that I have here is Hubble, and the model of this adapter is 851Y. We can also find this in other models. Also, in reality, at one point when we are going to do everything related to the connection, I'm going to show you some other models. Today we are going to do this, I'm going to show you how to use it, what we have to do to connect it to our network, to connect two computers or two devices using only one UTP cable. How does this adapter work? Simply put, it divides the UTP medium. Remember that the UTP cable is made up of four pairs, those four pairs are obviously eight wires. So, it uses two pairs to transmit data and the other two pairs also for data transmission. That's how it divides the medium. Something I have to clarify here, even though I am telling you that this or I mentioned the part of structured cabling, this does not constitute structured cabling. Pay attention. This does not constitute structured cabling. We cannot make this type of connections, for example, Y type to connect the end point of the user, for example, in the faceplate, no. Because we would be going over the structured cabling standards, as its name suggests and as I have already said. This is an adapter, an adapter that we can normally place when the structured cabling is already installed. Generally, well, I'm going to use it here at home, and it really works perfectly. At this moment I'm going to show you how to use it. I'm also going to show you a connection with my router and the two computers that I'm going to be connecting. On one side, I'm going to be connecting the computer, and on the other side, I'm going to be connecting a modem, my GPO and modem. Here I have a category 6 UTP cable, this cable. I have a SE jack category connector here, Pandit brand. And really, the first thing we have to do is create the ends of this cable. At least this one is already created. I just need to cut these cables here, but I'll do it. So, with these ends, so you can see how we can connectorize a jack type connector, we'll place it here. We're going to use this cable stripper. Simply, what we do is cut here. We always have to, as such, balance it here with this screw, and it is precisely so that it stays in a position where it won't cut the cable here. Okay, I always do this in this way. What I always do is untwist the UTP cable wires here. I do it with all of them, and here I just separate simply white orange, orange. Here I place the white green and white blue. I leave this here too because I'm doing it by the 568B standard. Here I'll leave the blue and here I leave the green, and then the brown and the white brown simply because that's how the B standard is organized. Here in this connector, if you can see here, these pandit connectors already bring here the color code of how we should place it. See that the B starts with the orange, then it continues with the white green and then white blue. Then comes the blue and the green, and then the white brown and brown. So, I put it in that same order here and there it is. After this, what we have to do is order it. The white orange goes to this side and the orange goes to this side. I don't know if you can see it there, but see that on the top part here, we can see on this top part. Here is the orange and on the bottom part is the white orange, which means that the white orange goes to this side and the orange goes to this side. We always have to place the jack this way, looking here. Okay, in this way, we can define that the white orange goes to this side, as I did here that it is on this bottom part, and the orange goes to this side. Well, it's for people who have never done this type of connectors and won't get confused there. 
Okay, the white green, see that that white green is here below and above is the white blue, which means that the white green goes to this side and the white blue goes to the back side. See, in this case, the blue is up, the green is down here. That means that the green goes to the front side and the blue goes to the back side, and so we go on. Okay, here is the brown. The white brown is for the back side and the brown is for here, this way. Very simple, we can do it. Simply, what we're going to do is punch. Here so that it can enter here, see, and there it is. There are some that are simpler, actually. These are Pandit brand and they are one of the best, really. I highly recommend these connectors because they are really quite strong and won't give you a bad connection. They are quite resistant to moisture as well. Since I don't have to tighten this jack, I simply use the crimper, place it like this and simply connect it. There it is. There it is. Whenever it's connected 100%, it simply makes a little noise like a click and there we know that it's well connected. Practically, this little lever you can see here falls and already ensures that it won't come out. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut this here. In the same way, we're going to do the other one. The other end is already made, I have it here, see. I'm going to punch for aesthetics. Very well, I have this cable and I have the two ends with the 568B. You can do it with the 568A if you want. Okay, now comes this adapter that's here. As I told you, it's Hubble brand and what we're going to do is simply connect it here. These connectors I have here come from other models as well. I have them here, see, they come from these models as well. They also usually call them Ethernet splitters. They are two female inputs. And one male input, which in this case would be the RJ45. I already told you, these are Hubble brand. Here, we can see several. These are some models. Here, I have another model as well. See, this is another model and. Here is also the same model that we already had. See, they are to divide the UTP medium, as I already told you in the preview. This really is for external connections to structured cabling. This cannot be done internally in structured cabling, okay? So be very aware of that. And this other one I'm going to stick here. There it is. See, this way we have it. Now, how are we going to connect this? Actually, I have these cables here, they are patch cords. Well, they already come in this size. Actually, this one here I did cut short, but it's quite small. And I'm going to use it obviously not to have so much long cable. In this case, we need four of these little cables to connect the two ends. Well, what are we going to do? I'm going to take two here. I'm going to take the green and the blue here. When we're going to connect this, see, pay attention to this. Here you can see in this case, most of the ones I just showed you also have this, see, here we have one here. See, here it indicates that it's connecting obviously on this side, on the jack side, the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 6 and here also 1, 2, 3, and 6. But on this side, it connects the 4, the 7, and the 8, and on this side, it's connecting the 1, the 2, the 3, and the 6. Well, that's how all the media start to be divided, so to speak. So when you're going to connect, you always have to be identifying well. For example, the green, I'm going to connect it on this side, on the side where it's connected to the 4, the 5, the 7, and the 8 and the blue I'm going to. Connect on this side, okay? And that way it's better so you can have better control, always, as if. They keep identified where each of the connectors is connected. Okay, that's just so you keep it, so to speak, identified. That way is how we're going to connect the other end, which is this one that's here. In the same way, we're going to connect it. Now let's go to the router. Okay, 
You can see here how the green is connected to the jack that's connecting the 4, 5, 7, and 8. Well, I'm going to use that or I'm going to use this green cable to connect it to the one port of my Wi-Fi router. And there it is connected and the other one, which is the blue, I'm going to connect it to another port. I'm going to connect it here to port 2. There it is, and that's it. Now let's go to the other end. Okay, you can see here that I have my modem, my GPO and modem. Here I have connected the fiber optic and here I have the cable that goes to my router currently. Here I have the connector, see, I'm connecting it with this cable that's here, which as I already told you is the one that's connecting the pin 4, 5, 7, and 8, which is the one we had already connected from the other end in the WAN port. This is the cable I'm going to use to connect it here. Okay, to my modem. Well, I'm going to show you here. See, I don't have a network on the computer currently. There I already connected it, and there you can see how I already have a network on this computer. This other connection that I have here that I'm going to use with the fourth cable or the fourth patch cord, I'm going to use it to connect another computer. This just so you can see that with these connections, with this type of connectors, we can then divide the UTP medium and use two pairs to power one device and two pairs to power another device. I'm going to connect it there. You can see how I already have the two cables connected, and there, as this PC is already linked, and we can see that it already has a network.